Ooh. Hi, doodly. Oh, oh, forgot I had this on. Sorry, I just came back from my flight. I got a special little treat for you. Come close. The iceberg video. The final is finally here, ladies and gentlemen. We're here to clean up the horrible series that I've started with the ocean iceberg. Last video flopped heavy, but that's okay. But that's okay. I'm here to finish what I started. So I decided to just mix the last two layers and just smash them together, give it a little fusion dance and just have it as one video because why the hell not? So I spent the majority of my day today just researching these topics and now I'm finally here to record it at 9.20 p.m. Yay. And I came up with this horrible, disgusting abomination of a script for this video, clocking in. Uh, 1,999 words and around 11,000 characters. So you know what? Please like and subscribe. Also, just a warning, if I get anything wrong, I apologize in advance. But I, I did do my best researching this. So like usual, it is tradition that I have to name this layer. So I think we're going to call this one... I don't know, he kind of looks like a glub tubus webbel to me, I'm not gonna lie. So first up, we got Phantom Island, Brumaha. Now, Brumaha is an island that's supposed to be off the north coast of the Yucatan Peninsula. And its coordinates are 22 degrees and 33 minutes north, and 91 degrees and 22 minutes west. It's described to be sort of uh, blondish or reddish from a distance by the Spanish. Thus, you know, given its name, Brumaha, which means like uh, russets or ginger. So like sort of reddish or blondish, you know. How it's described you know it, it's kind of funny how things work like that now isn't it maybe i should call myself captain can't fucking make a video to save his life now this island was documented by spanish cartographers and it was featured on a whole lot of maps of the gulf of mexico from the 16th to 20th century but what's weird about this island is now it's no longer there like my a will to live <laughs> hilarious i know thank you laugh you can laugh i'll give you a second I'll, you can laugh now, of course, this isn't anything that's, like, absurdly unusual. There are plenty of islands like this, and they're called Phantom Islands. Now, these are just islands that appear on older maps that we now or later find out that they're not there anymore, or maybe even never existed in the first place. And the wiki used the term contemporaneously, and I had to look up the definition of that word, and it showed this guy. And apparently, he was the FBI director from 2013 to 2017 after being fired by Donald Trump, so I don't, I don't know why he's there. Now, anyways, Phantom Islands are not to be confused with lost islands now lost islands we know for a fact the island was there at one point now it's not due to either like rising tides rising oceans or like just shifting land masses which happens sometimes you know earthquakes etc but with phantom islands however there's not any real proof that existed in the first place so naturally this is going to cause a lot of conspiracies because the internet does what the internet does best blow things out of proportion so these range from like actually logical things to um not so logical so logical is like just like i said about the lost island shifting land masses higher waters insert other reason that i can't think of at the moment because i think i mentioned them all <laughs> and then they range to like just a, a little step out of that extremely logical range so it takes a little step out as the uh, CIA fucking blowing it up or getting rid of it. You know, for the simple reason of expanding the United States exclusive economic zone. Whatever that means. So, you know, like I said, just a little out of the, the realm of, of possibility. But all in all, this island disappeared like my girlfriend after I take my schizophrenia medication. So anyways, next, a topic. So next we have the Baltic Sea Anomaly. Oh man. Now the Baltic Sea Anomaly is a geological formation that was picked up via sonar radar in 2011 by a diving team called Ocean X, which is a really cool name, I do have to say. Now they did this all while they were treasure hunting, which is even cooler. And it's located around the center of the Gulf of Bothnia. I think it's pronounced Bothnia. I don't know. I feel like I feel like Mike Tyson saying Bosnia. Now it's a circular formation that has a diameter of 200 feet and appears possibly man-made. Now the Ocean X team actually returned to the site in 2012 for more research and to take samples. And the material was sampled by a Volker Bruchert. I think that's how you pronounce. 
Probably not. And found that it was mostly made up of granites, sandstones, and volcanic rock. Now those are all pretty typical for being on the seafloor, except for volcanic rock. Now it's not impossible for volcanic rock to be on the seafloor, obviously, but it's still a little unusual for that area. So the volcanic rock was hypothesized to have been carried there by glaciers, and this is due to the fact that the area is very, very, very heavily influenced by the way glaciers thaw in that process. And of course, of course, there's gonna be conspiracies about it. Because I mean, just kind of look at the thing. And it just kind of, it just kind of looks like the Millennium Falcon now, doesn't it? So a whole lot of people just believe that it's a UFO. The leading theory is that it's just like mineral deposit that was left there by a glacier. And so next up is the Ningen. Now in researching the Ningen, I came across this quiz. So I decided to do it. And apparently I'm a nothing because the quiz couldn't load the second fucking question. Anyways, the Ningen is an Arctic anomaly that sort of resembling a cross between a whale and a human. So my personal theory is already that a, a human just got a little too lost in the sauce and, and fooled around with one too many whales, if, if you know what I'm saying. So they're described as a completely white humanoid creature. It's actually the, the picture that's uh, on this tier. Now it's described as a humanoid creature that can have legs or like a whale tail or like tentacles and it's around like 65 to 98 feet long. And to me, I mean, especially with the legs, they just kind of kind of look like a goober like I mean you've seen the picture like it just looks fucking weird now I think it's pretty obviously fake especially the legs one but just like entertaining the idea that the ones in the water are real like like with a tail um it, it would probably just be like an unidentified species of beluga whale that someone saw and they're just like you know what this thing needs let's give it some fucking arms you know that'll that'll make for an interesting story and then the internet just took it from there. Next up, we have the Cosmic Ocean. For the Cosmic Ocean, it's it's uh, it's quite a broad topic, I'm not gonna lie. So I'm gonna try and uh, slim it down like a teenager with an eating disorder. So basically, it's a way of looking at the world and space as like an ocean that came before everything and through the Cosmic Ocean. Earth and everything else was born. It's kind of convoluted. So it's kind of like a motif and it's used to represent like chaos and is present in a lot of mythologies like uh, ancient Egypt. Egypt, uh, ancient Greek Judaism, uh, ancient Indian, etc. I could keep listing mythologies forever. Now, I could go into detail explaining every single one of these mythologies and how it connects, but um, uh, no, thank you. I also think that this could be referring to like a literal cosmic ocean, otherwise known as the cosmic reef that was captured by the Hubble telescope, but that doesn't have to do with like a literal ocean. So I have a kind of a gut feeling that it's just referring to like the mythology of it, like the mythology of space being an ocean possibly even like literally being an ocean so it's not really much proof of it it's more so just a, an idea and like an interpretation so next we have the untouchable bathysphere bathysphere I don't, i'm just gonna call it bathysphere now this is in reference to william bb it's a funny last name and otis barton in the invention of the bathysphere which was kind of like a, a steel submersible that could actually resurface. In the shape of a ball designed to resist depths of up to 3,028 feet. Now these weren't the uh, the most advanced vessels since, you know, headaches from the great pressure and the claustrophobia weren't uncommon. And each dive down could also result in a lot of injury like bruises and, uh, you know, blood due to the vessel, you know, violently shaking when it was dropped. And a light could illuminate the darkness of the depths through the windows. So like, you know, so they could actually see something other than pure darkness. And on November 22nd, 1932, they dove to 2,100 feet approximately below the surface and William saw something very interesting. He described it as resembling a barracuda that were six feet in length with a shorter jaw that was always open. And it had a line of pale blue lights running down its entire body and had a mouth full of very large fangs. And he named it the untouchable bathysphere fish. And I mean like really? Really, you're gonna name it that? Like, come on, at least give it like like a cool, unique name. Like, personally, I would have gotten a little more creative, just a little bit. I probably would have called it something along the line of like the flying blue glowy fang dick or something like that. Like something cool, you know? That's because when I think of cool, I think of the FBGFD, the flying blue glowy fang dick. Now, throughout William's dives, he discovered a lot of other creatures, such as the five-lined constellation fish, the pallid sailfin, uh, the three-starred angler fish, and the abyssal rainbow guard, which is a really 
really weird last one. And none of these observed creatures have been found outside of his dives, which kind of leads a lot of people to believe, yeah, you know, they probably just aren't real and the man was kind of going nuts because of the, the pressure. So it's entirely possible that these newly discovered fish were already discovered too and they could have just misidentified it because, you know, like I said, the crushing depth. So either they weren't real, he just misinterpreted already discovered fish or they've like gone extinct by now or they're just waiting to be rediscovered so either way it's an interesting situation a cool little fact so moving on to the next thing so next up we have the altanen altan alt alt i don't know fucking the, the the thing antenna i'm just gonna call it altanen okay whatever it's the big antenna in the ocean okay so pretty much there's this big ass long looking antenna that was photographed in the bottom of the west cape horn by the altanen some like 12,808 feet deep. Now, that's extremely deep. For reference, um, you know when she's telling you, you know, go deeper? Well, in this case, you can't go deeper because this antenna is deep as fuck. That was... That was hilarious. So it was discovered in 1964, and as you've seen, it looks wild as hell. So naturally, people thought, ah, oh, yes, it must be an alien artifact, or, you know, something along those lines. Eventually, in 1971, a book called The Face of the Deep by Brucey e. Heason, <laughs> what a weird name, and Charles D. Hol Hollister, a little bit of a better name than Heason, but, you know, whatever, and had been identified as Cladoriza Concrescensens. <laughs> it was classified as that and it's a it's a carnivorous sponge so uh, you know i guess spongebob is just kind of kind of going wild i guess spongebob is just off the gloop down there just just getting getting loopy off that poopy and the interesting thing is that nothing has ever been photographed like that before so i i'm sure you can guess people just think it's like a cover-up for you know the whole antenna theory so next up we have the ocean at night in part three i made a bit of an oopsie and no i'm not talking about fucking up and saying like Oh, you know, I wonder how much water is under Earth's mantle when obviously it would be fucking mineralized from if it's that deep already. But no, I mentioned the ocean at night theory in that video despite only needing to explain vertical migration. So you can just go watch that video, you know? You can do that. Yeah, it's a self-promotion. Sorry, I'm a YouTuber, okay? I have to do it, okay? Someone could die, and as a YouTuber, it's my responsibility to say like and subscribe at the end of the video. <laughs> yeah, go watch that video, unless you've already seen the playlist, then just, you know, watch it again. Yeah, go watch it again right now. Oh, wait, oh, wait, just pause this video, open up a new tab, and go watch it. Oh, wait, oh, wait, don't worry. So, next we have, where do eels come from? And this is honestly pretty simple. You see, when mommy eel and a daddy eel love each other very much, the daddy eel... What? Sorry, what? You want to know some crazy-ass facts instead of some stupid analogy? You're really fucking weird, you know that? I like it. Let's get started. Okay. So apparently, in the past, people have had a hard time tracking where eels come from because we, we don't exactly have a mother's wing in a hospital for mother eels, you know? I, I just, you know, thought I'd, I'd mention that because, you know, in case you didn't know. Sarah Coney, an aquatic biologist, says that they spawn in remote and, like, nutrient-poor areas. But there's something beautiful I want to talk to you about and I want to tell you about. It's about a man named Sigmund Freud. And no, 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 no. I'm not talking about his theory on women naturally being in love with their father, okay? You disgusting, stupid animal. The door is over there. Get the fuck out of my goddamn classroom. I'm talking about his eel escapades. You see, in essence, Mr. Freud was tasked with finding if eels reproduce sexually. So he was given like 400 fucking eels. And pretty much, he just fucking ripped every single one of them apart. And on the 400th eel, he had finally found some goddamn testes. <laughs> he had finally located the eel dick. So more studies went on from there, and eventually the conclusion landed on the eel starting out as an egg in the Sargasso Sea, which we mentioned in the third episode of the iceberg. Yes, this is another self-promotion, okay? Deal with it. Get in the gun. I'm sorry, okay? You gotta... Okay? You gonna fucking... You gonna fucking watch that shit, boy? So the eel eggs then hatch in the larvae, where the ocean currents carry them upstream a little bit and closer to land, where they evolve into glass eels. And then, at this point, they can, you know, actually swim. So they decide to go upstream a little bit more and transform into elvers, or whatever the fuck they're called, which look like a lot more like their mature self, and they keep going upstream. But then eventually, after 20 years, they finally reach maturity and decide, you know, enough of this upstream nonsense. And they all, at the same time, return to the Sargasso Sea, have a fucking orgy, and then die. And then fucking die. If that's not the best way to go, 
I don't know what is. So basically, the sex of an eel is determined by its environment, and only once they reach maturity do they develop testes. So wasn't that a nice talk about um, eel dick? Here we go, boys. Last but not least, the Flannan Isle Lighthouse Mystery. This is a mystery that involves Flannan Island and a lighthouse. Mind blown, right? So basically, three men were stationed at Eileen Moore off the Flannan Isles, and these men were James Ducat, Thomas Marshall, and Donald MacArthur. And on the evening of December 17th, 1900, after a storm had come through, a ship by the name of the Hersperus attempted to make contact with the lighthouse. And similar to me when I tried to flirt with women, they got no response. So the crew went on board and they went up to the lighthouse and the compound and they found chairs scattered, a dining table set up for dinner that was never eaten, a clock that was no longer ticking, canary in its cage, and one oil skin, which was uh, a tire that was supposed to be worn by the men if they were to ever leave the lighthouse. And there had to be at least one person in the lighthouse at all times but all these men were missing. So the crew of the Hurstress went around the island searching for these men, and all they found was damage from the storm, destroyed cargo, and no sign of the men. So it had just seemed like they just vanished without a trace. So there was a popular conspiracy that was going around at the time that Donald MacArthur, because he was a very uh, ill-tempered man, sort of, like he had, a, he had a very short fuse, got angry really quickly. So there was a theory that he just lost his shit somehow and then fucking murdered them and then just jumped off a cliff out of guilt, I, I guess. But the leading theory is that they were actually swept up in a storm after attempting to like secure equipment and the such. That was, you know, what the broken cargo was. Though the most interesting thing to mention about this whole story were actually the reports leading up to the day and there there were reports written by Thomas Marshall. So an entry on December 12th states, severe winds the likes of which I've never seen before in 20 years. And he had also written that James Ducat had been extremely quiet and Donald MacArthur had actually been crying because of how bad the storm was, which is very out of character. And on the 13th, Marshall had reported that all three of them had actually been praying. Again, very out of character for these people. And from the 12th to the 14th, there were actually no storm was reported in that area and the last report was on december 15th and it read storm ended sea calm god is over all so this message was just confirming that there was calm weather on the 15th and that was the last report so this led many to believe that it was something more than just rogue waves that took the men down so you know it's a mystery nobody knows what happened and the official report was that they had just been taken by the storm even though it was calm weather at the time so you know pretty uh conflicting there for sure and that's all Woo, yeah wow yeah Woo, 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 woo. Well, the series is finally over. If you guys want more like iceberg stuff, just let me know. I mean, I guess I'll be able to tell if, if like the video does well. But if it's like last one, and you guys are just kind of sick of it. I, I get it. So I'll just um, put the kibosh on that thing. So yeah, I really appreciate you guys watching. Make sure to like and subscribe. Leave a comment telling what you think. Here's some videos you'd like, and take care.